Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Data here and welcome to my NHL 22 line chemistry tutorial. It has been a long time coming since NHL 22 has dropped. I've heard your cries for help. I have seen the data signal in the sky and I am here to calm and quell all of your fears and storms in your NHL franchise mode life. It's been a little bit of time of me trying to figure out the chemistry system. So I do apologize for taking a little bit of time, school, full-time work, other YouTube and Twitch series going on plus trying to just figure it out on the side. It's been a bit of a journey, I do have to say. So I am excited to get into this. I know that most of you who are watching are looking for quick answers. You're probably sitting on your couch, looking at your lines saying, what the heck is going on? So I'm gonna try to keep it short and sweet, but there is the quick disclaimer at the start of this video. So the very first thing I need to tell you is that so much of it goes into franchise mode, not just line chemistry, but franchise mode, is very kind of like case by case. Very often, even in my last chemistry tutorial video for NHL 21, where it was a bit more simple, very complicated, but a bit more simple in terms of, okay, playmaker, sniper, power forward, always thinking about player types, there's still like almost 300 comments over on that video of people talking about, oh, well, actually in my franchise mode, I had a veterans coach and a two-way forward with a plus 13 line score got a this and a that. So it's totally impossible for me to try every single permutation of every player with every X factor, with every line fit, with every type of coach, with every everything, impossible. I've spent hours and hours trying to get as many answers as possible, but I cannot figure out everything. That is why I encourage you, before you even watch more of this video, if you see that, my, that your questions are not being answered, leave a comment down here on YouTube or join us on the Discord server, link in the description, and we can talk more about your franchise mode. You can help with other people's franchise modes, etc. Because as helpful this video may be, it is very possible that you still have questions when you're done watching it. For example, with the X factors and which ones go together to make synergies, I'm gonna get into some numbers later, but there are quite literally millions millions of permutations. So we can't know everything just a couple of months into NHL 22. Now, that being said, let's get this started. First off, if you are a player of franchise mode from previous years, you may have come into NHL 22 thinking that, okay, I've got it locked and tattooed onto my brain. Power forward, playmaker, sniper. Power forward, playmaker, sniper. That is the combination I need to get a plus five. If I have a two-way forward, there's no chance I get a plus five. If I have two of the same player types on one line, there's no way to get a plus five. As you can already see, and this is the reason I took Boston, there are two two-way forwards on this first line and it gets a plus five. I'm very happy to see this. This is a huge improvement for EA. Sniper, two-way forward, two-way forward. Even with a great line fit, this would be a plus one or a plus three max on NHL 21. The line fit here is horrible. Well, Marshawn has a good line fit, but Bergeron is half decent and Pasternak is not very good at all. Yet, the line has a plus five due to the X-Factor chemistry line contributors. We'll get into that later on. But just to say, in this game, NHL 22, the player types still come into play a little bit, but very, very much less than in NHL 21. For example, you may remember how line scores work. So here's a quick breakdown on line scores. If you see the little check marks and X's and even dashes on the side here underneath the player's line fit, that tells you the line score. So a check mark is a plus one, a dash is a zero, and a red X is a negative one. In previous games, if you had the sniper power forward playmaker combo and the line score was 11 or more, it was automatically a plus five. So this line score is one, two, three, four, minus one, so three, four, five, six, minus two, so we're at four, seven, eight, minus one, so we're at seven. This line score is only seven, but it has a plus five due to the X factor contributors. Let's look at the second line, for example. Craig Smith, plus two. Howla, it's a zero. Hall, it's a zero as well. So this line gets a plus two. Sniper, playmaker, two-way forward. If there was a power forward, like Charlie Coyle, I put him right here, still a zero. Even though the line score is positive, and it's playmaker, power forward, sniper. In previous games, I would think that this would likely be at least a plus one, not a plus five in the slightest, but at least a plus one. But now, even though you have that magic player type combo, it's still a zero. 
So it's a much heavier focus on the line fits. So in previous games, it was about that player type. The line fit came into it, but the player types were very heavy. This year in NHL 22, listen carefully for sniper, playmaker, power forward combo. The minimum you need to get a plus one. Your line score must be five. So like we said, back in this line, let's put Charlie Coyle on this line. The line score with the power forward here is one, two minus one is one. This is zero, so one. This is zero. So this line score is a one. It has to be at least a five to get a plus one. Let's see Trent Frederick on this line. Does this do anything? No. Even though his line score is a two, so two and then no one else is with him, this is not a very good second line. So you might think about getting a different coach for the second line because you can't really find anybody. If you want to get a plus two with sniper, playmaker, power forward, you need at least a line score of seven. Seven, eight, and even nine will give you a plus two. Now to get a plus three, you need a line score of 11. So in previous games, like we said, playmaker, power forward, sniper, line score of 11, automatic plus five. That is now a plus three. I wish I could show you, but this is all knowledge I've gotten from my many different franchise mode experimentations. I can't show you that on the screen, but that is the knowledge that you need to remember and that you can apply to your own franchise mode that you're likely sitting in front of in front of the TV right now. To get a plus five with sniper playmaker power forward, I believe the line fit needs to be 13 plus. Now you may have noticed on Eric Howla here, he has some pretty crazy X factors. Don't fret, I put these in myself. Eric Howla does not have all these X factors. What I wanted to illustrate was though, look at this guy who's a playmaker, put him with Bergeron, or replace him from Bergeron, replace Marchand, replace Pasternak, it, the plus five is maintained on the first line. In fact, Brad Marchand coming to the second line gives this line a plus one. This is solely due to the X factor. X factors in NHL 22 are something you can add or remove from a player. For some reason, even as in NHL 21, you still cannot edit a player's player type, which you were able to in NHL 20. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to do it before starting up the franchise mode, which I'll show you in a moment. But now if I go to Eric Howla, I can remove those X factors that I already gave to him. So I click on abilities here. I'm gonna click on each of one of these X factors that I already gave to him, uncheck them. You can slide the R there, your right stick there to toggle if it's either a superstar ability or a zone ability, pretty much making it either silver or gold. So I'll take out all of these. Now you'll notice there are four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40 different X factors and one, two, three, four, five, six different spots that you can equip them with. Now, if my math is correct, I would do 40 multiplied by 39, by 38, by 37, by 36, by 35 to get the total number of permutations that I could do with those 40 X factors in those six slots. The number I arrive at is 2,763,633,000 600 different permutations of X factors. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have time to figure out how every single one of those different uh, X factors and how they're put. And okay, now with one, now with two, now with three, four, five, six, now change the six, try a different five. Now try with a forwards coach, a defensive coach, a generals coach, a veterans coach. Like I said, I don't know about you, but I unfortunately do not have time to do all that experimentation. I don't think anyone does. But just to show you, now I take out Eric Howla's X factors I gave to him. The line that was a plus five is now a plus one. So Bergeron and Pasternak cannot do all the work by themselves. Howla is tearing the line down. He only has a line score of one. It is not possible. If I put Marshawn back up there though, plus five, all is well in the world. The X factors also play a huge role for the special teams as in HL 21, there was a heavy focus on the player types again. You went playmaker, sniper, power forward, or maybe even two snipers, and then you would put an offensive defenseman, and another offensive defenseman, you get a plus five. Here, look at the line scores here. Here's a plus one, minus one is zero, dashes, okay, negative one, and there we go, zero. So negative one is this power plays line score, but because of all the X factors, it gets a plus 
five. Two two-way forwards and a two-way D with a negative one line score, yet it's a plus five. This is a total game changer in NHL 22. Now, before I get too ahead of myself, I want to show you how to change player types before starting up a franchise mode. If you are interested in maybe kind of tweaking some players for chemistry or for realism purposes, all you'd have to do is go to the more tab, go to rosters, then click on edit player. Then you're going to choose the NHL. And if that is the league of the player that you want to edit, choose the team that you want to edit from. Let's you can do that in the drop down menu here. Choose a random team, Chicago Blackhawks, uh, Patty Kane. I don't want you to be a sniper. I want you to be a playmaker. Let's just say that I click on details of Patrick Kane looking good. I scroll down here and sniper. I can change him to whatever I want him to be sniper playmaker, power forward, even two-way forward, enforcer, etc. I can even give him a primary or secondary position, change his jersey number, stuff like that. But all of that cannot be changed, stuff like positions and player types in the franchise mode. This must be done before you start your save file. Then you exit out, click on save, and you're good to go. When you start up the franchise mode, the new save file, all those changes and any others that you make will be there. All those changes to the overalls or even the potentials of the players and everything else on all the other teams that you touched upon will be there. Don't need to worry about the X factors too much because you can still touch up on those in the franchise mode. But of course, keep note that you can only change the X factors of the players on your teams. So if you want to change X, X factors of players not on your team, this would also be the time to do so. So that's all taken care of. But now you might be saying to yourself, all right, all this line fit is well and good, but what do these check marks even mean where do they come from how can I change them are they permanent what well let me answer that question let me answer that question for you what you got to do is go to your coaching staff and check out the line preferences of your head coach so when you start up the franchise mode you get an automatic head coach I would recommend you probably stick with your head coach or one of your associate coaches for year number one even if it's not ideal unless there's someone really good to hire usually an associate coach is in the B or B minus range and we'll get to that in a moment, but usually year number one is not ideal. Click R3 on PS4 here, and then you rotate down to the line fit. I see this is a general fit. I don't see the X marks, the X, the checks and everything, but I see a generally there's a 63% fit. The higher the bar, the more the fit for that player on that line. So Charlie McAvoy on that first defensive pair, haven't gone to defense yet, but he'll have two checks on his pair. Brad Marshall on the first line, he has a lot of checks and one X. That's where it doesn't go to a full bar. That's how I, Connor Clifton there, full checks, perfect. 63% team fit. Now I can go and look at his line preferences. So on line number one, he is, this coach, overload, balanced, shoot, balanced and balanced so what you can do now when you're looking for a new coach you're looking for line fits is pull out this trusty little chart created by bmarsh92 over on the franchise mode subreddit thank you to him for the permission to use this in this video as well as my last video so let's start with carry dump okay carry dump bias this coach is balanced so that means if the player is also balanced he gets a check mark but because he's balanced he can never be too far away so whether the player be carry or dump the worst it could be is a yellow dash. So the reason why we have so many zeros in our lineup, but not a lot of pluses or negatives, is because as you can notice, the word balanced is almost there in every single preference. Balanced all over line number two, four, and all three defensive pairs are all balanced, 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 balanced. Now here's the annoying thing though. Some coaches, if you look in the bottom left, you see hold line slash pinch. There are some coaches who will have a preference for hold line. After the normal players in the NHL begin to retire and generated players start coming into the NHL, whether it be right away in year number one or all the way far deep in year number 20, there are no defensemen that are generated with a hold line preference. So every defenseman is either balanced or pinch from here on out, aside from the players that you begin the franchise mode with. So a real defenseman, whatever, Dowdy, Carlson, Burns, Petrie, all these real defensemen, they might have the hold line preference. Anyone new will never have hold line. Therefore, a balanced coach can be very helpful in that way, but if you have a hold line coach, 
he will quickly become obsolete as you go deeper into your franchise mode. So keep note of that when you're drafting players, but we'll get to that a little bit more when we're talking about how to scout and draft according to line chemistry. So let's say you came and looked at your staff, it, your head coach has a 40 or a 50% team fit, you're not happy about that. In year number one, you can go and fire your head coach and get a new one, but there are gonna be no NHL head coaches available. You have to wait till July 1st of 2022. The associate coaches, however, there are some possibilities who are B minus. When it comes to line fit and team fit, you should look for 60 plus percent, ideally in the 70s, but 60 plus percent is quite doable. And the overall should always be as high as possible. For example, if I have, if I could get a C rated coach with a 70% fit, or a B or B plus rated coach with a 60% fit, I'm going with the B rated coach every day of the week. Think about that as well when July 1st of next season rolls around, when there's some A rated coaches, you might say, oh, I have my B minus coach at a 63 and there's this A plus coach, but he's a 57, go with the A plus coach. It will help your simulation much more. So you look at the line fits here, 63, 55, 47, 59, 55. Okay, 65, Lillian LaBarbera. Now, from the 63 to the 65 between my current coach and this coach, is it worth firing him to hire her? Now, look at how Grizzlick, Frederick, Lazar, Riley, Forbord, these are the players who are getting high line fits. Meanwhile, Patrice Bergeron does not have a very good line fit. Marchand, Pasternak, Hall are all decent and McAvoy is way less. So you need to weigh this when you're choosing your head coach. Do I want a coach who's good for my team overall, maybe some zeros and plus ones throughout, or do I want to build around my big pieces and get that plus five on my first line? You might say, oh, well, Bergeron, Pasternak, and, and Marsha have the, the X factors, so even if it's not a good line fit, they'll have the plus five. Yes, you are correct. But it depends. Some teams may not be so, um, I guess, lucky to have a first line where all three players have gold attributes, gold X factors. So always consider that when choosing your coach. Make sure that there are high line fits with the players that you'll be building around long term, especially if you want to keep that coach for years to come. So with all that understood, you can now start thinking about the change that you could make to your team if you want to improve the chemistry. So who's kind of holding this team back? Maybe like, let's look at the third line here. Like Nick Felino has two, let's try and fix up the third line. Yeah, let's go uh, like a full revamp. So for example, Nick Felino, I could move him up to the first line where he has a better fit, but I don't know if I want him to be there. Balance balance works great when I see his pre uh, preferences, but he likes to shoot and the coach says to cycle. He says energy, the coach says balance, so it's not ideal here. So his line fit is zero, two checks and two X's. Charlie Coyle is a zero, one check, one X, and same for Wagner, zero, two checks, two X's. So what I can do now, I could change my entire coaching system to get a better third line, or I could start looking at some trades to do to bring in players that are, I guess, more appropriate for this coach. So if I have my scouts ready to go, which you will in your number one, you could fire the scouts and hire different ones, but you will already have pro scouts scouting in the Pacific and the Atlantic and the Metro, etc. In my scouting tutorial that'll come out soon, I'll talk more about who you should hire, who you should fire. But in general, you already have scouts who have some of the league scouted, so you don't need to really think about that too much at the moment. You can go to the player search and start thinking, okay, I want a forward, I want a third line scorer, and player type, I don't really care about that yet, I'm just gonna search and see what happens. 74 options come up, so let's say I sort by overall, and I say, huh, let's see, Josh Anderson here from the Montreal Canadiens, how does he fit? I scroll down, ah, oh, he fits forward line one. Very good to know, but I don't have room for him for forward line one, so goodbye, I'll keep rotating here. Alexi Lafreniere, top six, Yanmark penalty killer lines. Hmm, interesting, Ryan Getzlaff fits all forward lines. That means that Getzlaff is very balanced. He won't be amazing on any line, but he'll be pretty balanced on all of them. Keep that in mind. Richie Stom, looking for third line fits. Wenberg, Cousins, Zegris, top six forward lines from Boone Jenner. Pounty kill, bottom six lines from Adam Henrique. I like this. So let's say Adam Henrique, I say, okay, I want you to be my third line centerman. Just send whatever back the other way because I don't really care about this franchise mode. Okay, there's the centerman taken care of. Now let's think about the left wing. Kapanen, forward line one. Michael Backlin, bottom six, but I already have a centerman. 
bottom six here. Alex Kerfoot could play left wing, and he fits the bottom six and power play lines. Okay, I'll trade for Alex Kerfoot. Get him for Craig Smith. Thank you very much. And now I just need a right winger. Just keep going here, looking through who would fit the third line or bottom six. Valerie Nachuskin. All right, let's grab him from Colorado. And there we go, Valerie Nachuskin, welcome. So now we can set our roster how we like it. And even though I've already traded for the three guys I want for my lineup, don't forget that just because a player is not fully scouted doesn't mean you can't scout him yourself. You see the little binoculars there at underneath Pro Scout Assessment? The four bars means that he is fully scouted. Four bars fully scouted, four bars, four bars. A lot of good scouting's already been done when you start your franchise mode, thankfully. If you change coaches, remember, this is lines based on our coach Camden Allen's scheme. If you change coaches and that and it's the um, that coach uh, La Barbara, if it says Camden Allen, it's not La Barbara. You have to rescout the players until it says La Barbara instead. So I'm just trying to find someone who doesn't have four bars. And here that player is, for example, Craig Smith, who we already traded to to Toronto not scouted because he was our player, therefore he wasn't scouted. So I would press on triangle, scout player. I would go to from quick to complete, give me a complete report and then confirm. This report should take less than a week. And when you come back and look at Craig Smith in about that week time or so, we will have him fully uncovered, or at least fully uncovered, depending on the rating of your scout. Is he busy with other stuff, etc. But it shouldn't take too long to get the four bars fully uncovered for Craig Smith. And when I put the lines how I arrange them with Henrique on the second, Nechuskin on the third, I get my plus one. Let's go back over the line score now. Here's a plus two, plus three is five, plus another one is six. So with a plus six line score, even though it's two way forward, two way forward, two way forward, all three of the same player types, I get a plus one. Now, something I forgot to mention with the player types was that even if this first line of Marchand, Bergeron, and Pasternak, let's say they didn't have X factors, but they had a perfect line fit or a really good line fit, and they were all sniper, 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 or playmaker, 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 they would still get the plus five, whereas in NHL 21, two of the same or especially three of the same player type would hurt the chemistry. So transitioning now over to the defense here, we see that Grizzlick with dash dash, McAvoy, check mark, check mark, uh, Morgan Riley, does anyone have a great fit on the first pair? A really perfect fit perhaps, Connor Clifton. Connor Clifton on pair number one with Charlie McAvoy gives it a plus three, even though it's two way D and a two way D, this is unheard of from NHL 21. This line gets a plus three, this pairing gets a plus three because it is a plus four. Perfect. Now, if it was offensive defenseman and defensive defenseman, even without the McAvoy X factors, I am 99% sure this would actually be a plus five. Of course, McAvoy's X factors do also contribute, as you see in the bottom corner there, X factor chemistry line contributor ice pack. So it's interesting because some X factors will say contributor and some will not. Like when I gave Eric Howla his X factors earlier, it ha still said no ability next to X factor chemistry line contributor. So difficult to figure out which ones contribute. Like I said, I don't have time for 2.7 billion permutations. But uh, another note about X factor is that it very much increases the trade value. Eric Howla's tra trade value right now is about double, maybe triple when he had those gold and silver attributes. Not just one, but all of them. So the more X factors, the more trade value. So it could be a way to cheese the system. If you have a player trying to trade like Eric Howla and you wanna get more value out of him, you could just slap on some X factors and then trade him away since his value is higher. Uh, he'll perform better on the team that you trade him to and it's a bit of cheesing the system But really at the end of the day, it's up to you how you play your franchise mode The last thing I want to note, I want to make sure I didn't forget to say this Player positions do matter in the chemistry For example, let's say Frederick, Haula, and Lazar on this fourth line all had good line fits If Haula is center left wing playing center and Frederick is just a centerman playing left wing This could be a plus one line that is brought down to a zero so I switch them, ah, now I get a plus one. If, if, for example, this was working. I don't want to go and kill myself to trade for fourth liners who have good fits just to illustrate that point to you. But trust me that the centers playing on the wings and even left wings and right wings playing on the wrong side can also affect chemistry. I had a situation once where I had a left wing on the right and a right wing on the left. 
I swapped them and then I got a plus one for the chemistry. So even the wings playing on their proper wings and the center playing at center will affect the chemistry despite the line fit. So with the line chemistry as it is, the plus five in the first line, the plus five in the power play, etc. I want to try and simulate a season here and then compare it to a season that we will simulate when we remove the X-Factors from Marsha, Bergeron, and Pasternak. Trying to figure out, can a line of 91 overalls at a zero chemistry perform just as well as a line of 91s with a plus five, where they're really like 96s? So, with the lineup like this, and that plus one in that third line, simulating a full NHL season. So, after a full season of plus five on the first line, Patrice Bergeron scores 94 points, Marchand 89, and Pasternak 88 with 43 goals. All three players above a point per game. Charlie McAvoy with 78 points. Look at the power play points as well. 23, 27, 31, 17, even 12 for Taylor Hall. That is how the season goes with the plus five on the first line and the plus five on the power play unit. Note as well, the team as a whole had a 50 win season going 50, 29, and three. Now note very interestingly that when all of the X factors are removed, Despite the same line fits and player types, Marsha, Bergeron, and Pasternak now have a line score of zero. And on the special teams, the previous plus five is now in fact a negative one. So with these players stripped of their X factors, now when we simulate a full 82 game season, Bergeron scores 87 points, Marchand 85, and Pasternak 83. Like 20 less goals for him, but much more for Marchand. And McAvoy had like 40 less points here. So very interesting to note, of course, every simulation will be different and these players are still 90 plus overalls. But the biggest difference seems to be in the power play points as from a plus five to a negative one, now the most power play points on the team go to Pasternak with only 15. So it seems as though they did, they maintained a very good five on five play, all being above a point per game, these first liners. But the power play is what really took a hit and that really hurt Charlie McAvoy as well as he only had four power play points. As well as the team record as a whole, even though I didn't have Kerfoot, Henrik, and Nechuskin, the team, four less wins, still a very good year, pretty negligible as to whether or not that plus five in the first line really carried the team or not. So back to the main timeline here where it was a 50 win season for the Bruins, I would love to do some more experimentations with, okay, what about if it's just a plus one and plus three in the middle six or in the bottom six and then not as good on the top six. There are so many experiments that you can do in your franchise mode. That's what I would love to hear down in the comments more about. But like I said, this is more of just a understanding line chemistry video and you go from there with your own specific and particular situations. So to finish off the video, what we can do now is go all the way to the draft. So whether or not we do well in the playoffs, let's go ahead and get to the middle of June or so. It's also up for debate as to whether or not line chemistry applies in the playoffs. Again, a lot of this evidence comes down to anecdotal evidence. No one from EA is going to tell you that line chemistry does not matter in the simulation once you hit the postseason. It has been argued that plus fives, plus threes, all of that just it gets erased when it's the playoffs. I would say I've seen some evidence of that, but I feel as though I've seen some evidence that the chemistry does play a role. Maybe it's coincidence, but we'll never really know. Philadelphia wins the Stanley Cup. How do you do? And we'll get to the draft now. Anaheim's going to pick first, all that good stuff. So again, in my scouting video, I'll tell you more about how it's important to make sure your scouts are constantly finding out as much as possible about the prospects, because when it comes time to draft, you want to know as much as possible, including how their line fit will work with your current coach. So now we're on the draft. Let's start it up. Let's say we have a top pick in the draft. Let me just trade for like the fifth overall pick here. Let me see what like a big name prospect. Trade accepted. Thank you very much. So let's just sim to pick number five. All right. So pick number five, uh, there's going to be some generated players and there's going to be some real players. So remember to take that in consideration when thinking about those generated defense and with the whole pinch and all that stuff. So it comes to my pick. Let's say I'm really between Nicholas Benstrom and Matthew Savoie. If I go into my line fit here, I can see, okay, so I already know right, up, right off the bat, 100%, this guy, his cycle shoot is shoot, and his hold pinch is pinch. 
He's not balanced for anything, so he's not going to get check marks, but he would have dashes. He would have two dashes in my team if I keep this coach. Matthew Savoy, meanwhile, he is three bars scouted for scheme fit, so don't fully put your trust in it. Balanced cycle, balanced, balanced, overload. So I don't have my coach's line fits in front of me. What you should do is take a picture of them before you go into the draft. But I remember that there's a lot of balances. So not only will I have some check marks, the cycle and the overload will be dashes. So this is most likely a line score of plus three, unless one of those cycles, the coach says shoot or otherwise. But I like the balances here for Matthew Savoy. Let's say I say, okay, Savoy is the choice. I go with him, bang, he's drafted, welcome to the team. And when the season comes around, the beginning of the preseason of year number two, I will be able to go and see in the actual lines with the bars what his fit is and what line is best for him. So then July 1st comes around, I may be saying, okay, I am not too impressed with this coach, maybe I want to go and hire staff. So go to the hire staff screen and you will see that there are already some coaches. I didn't renew any of my coaches, so you'll see I need a head coach, associate coach, assistant coach. If I do not fill this myself, whether I am on auto staff management or not, they will be filled by the CPU. Uh, note as well that you cannot go to the higher staff screen as I am on right now unless your staff management is set to manual in the settings. If it's set to auto, you won't even have the possibility to come to this screen. So I look at head coaches and I start scrolling through some of these A- rated coaches. Jacques Vanier, 52. Laurent Rivet, 52. Maxime Guit. I don't know if, if all these Quebecois coaches really existed, the Montreal Canadiens would be very happy. Camden Allen, there's our guy, 46%. Tyler Montoya, 63. Guy Dany, 57, I think that was. Now he's down to, to B. So Montoya might be our guy here with the 63% fit and a very good fit for Marsha. Now, I didn't resign uh, Bergeron. I didn't do any of the management. So obviously this team is a bit depleted, so I can't see everybody. There's not that many players to look at. But Tyler Montoya is probably the guy I'll go ahead and sign him. Now, here's something interesting you can try and do. Just a quick little tidbit of information. Let's say I want to hire this NHL head coach, and then I also want to hire this guy here, Goligoski, to be my associate coach, but he thinks that he can be an NHL head coach. What you can do is sign Goligoski to be the head coach and then demote him to associate coach or even assistant coach or even goalie coach if you want to get a stacked lineup of uh, your coaching staff, especially if owner mode is off, the staff salary in the bottom right corner is irrelevant. So I could hire Montoya straight up as my NHL head coach. I can just offer them a ton of money as well because uh, the uh, owner mode is off, but I need to remember that other teams will be sending offers, so I cannot wait too long. Sending Goligoski the head coach offer, by the time he accepts, maybe Montoya accepts with somebody else. But in general, Let's say you fire your head coach in the middle of the season. You can promote your associate coach to the interim head coach. Then you can hire someone else as the actual head coach. And then you demote him to your AHL goalie coach, promote your associate coach to your actual coach, then promote the AHL goalie coach who you hired as your head coach back to the actual associate coach. It's a lot of playing musical chairs here because the game does not allow you to hire you to hire a coach for a role that is already filled. So it's a lot of musical chairs unfortunately. And it doesn't allow you to ever be during the season without a head coach. You need to have at least an interim head coach. So again, it creates a bit of a kerfuffle. But honestly, my friends, that is just about it. I wish I had more to say again with the permutations and the different X factors and the superstar abilities and all that stuff. But it's really going to come down to a lot of your own experimentation. Remember that. Here are the key takeaways. The line score is of the utmost importance. The player type does not matter as much as it used to, and it really doesn't matter too, too much anymore because a lot of the time, like Marshawn Bergeron, these players are not going to be the perfect, perfect line score. You can get a plus five with three snipers, with three two-way forwards and all that. A lot of it comes down to the X factors, which you can add and remove yourself. Can a player develop these abilities? I have heard yes, I have not seen it. It is, sounds like it is extremely rare, but possible. I would not count on it. Instead, I would add or drop X factors and superstar abilities for the players in my franchise mode according to how they perform. You decide, 
So it still kind of makes no sense that you can't change the player type, but you can change the X factor, which boosts the player's trade value and their ability in the game. But I digress. Make sure that you are always scouting with your pro scout so you figure out and uncover players' line fits. Make sure you are always scouting prospects so you know who to draft. Make sure you're always building around the players you want to build around. Get a coach that you can, you know, maybe by years two or three that you can hold on to until they retire. Try and make it a young coach that will stay until maybe his 60s or so. Therefore, you wouldn't have to even think about hiring a new coach after year two if you're going to go till year 16, let's say, just a random number. And remember that if you have any questions, anything you want to add on line chemistry, this is the community to do it in. So please leave your thoughts. Did I miss anything? Is there anything that you learned that was new? What do you want to throw in? What is breaking your head? Leave a comment down here on YouTube or over on the Discord server where there are are hundreds of people who love franchise mode who would be just gnawing at the bit to help you as much as they can. If you enjoyed the video, if it was helpful, consider leaving a like and do also consider subscribing. A lot of franchise mode on this channel guides to franchise mode, to line chemistry, to scouting. My own franchise mode series on 22 my Dynasty Mode series on HL7 is coming back, Twitch series of MLB The Show Franchise Mode and other stuff on the Twitch page. So make sure to check out all those links down in the description. And I so very much appreciate you taking the time. I really do hope it was helpful. I look forward to reading all of your thoughts and learning more with all of you as more online chemistry comes out. Looking forward to things like roster sharing being very helpful in the month of December. As EA has said, I do wish you the best in all of your Franchise Mode series. I'd love to hear about them. Discord server especially where you can share pictures and talk about records and stuff like that. So we would love to welcome you there. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch once again. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.